Pole Position was released and developed by Namco in 1982. The game was designed by Toru Iwatani, who had designed the GB's game and Pac-Man. It was the most popular coin-operated arcade game of 1983 and it's easy to see why. The track on which you race is the Fuji Race Circuit. Pole Position was the first ever video game to use a real race track. To race on it though, the player must first qualify. Manage this and it's off to Fuji. The Namco Pole Position hardware was the first to use 16-bit microprocessors with two Zilog Z80-002 processors. It was also capable of displaying up to 38,040 colors. That was pretty impressive for 1983. So let's start off the ports with the most basic of all, the Atari 2600. Now while this is as basic as port as they come, we still get gears, qualifying laps and lap times. Sure the F1 cars look more like logs that morph into space invaders, but it's still playable and that's what matters. The first thing you'll notice about the Atari 5200 port is the horrible colour palette used. The 2600 looks more pleasing. The second thing you'll notice is the choppy scrolling. The third thing you'll notice is that you have no brakes. Yep, pushing up and down changes gear while pressing the fire button accelerates. Where are the brakes? Do I need to connect another controller and use that controller's button for the brake? If I do, then that's rather dumb. The Atari 8-bit line of home computers port is basically the same as the 5200 version but with a slightly nicer colour palette and one massive improvement. The game now auto accelerates just like the 2600 version allowing you to break with the fire button. This makes the game far more playable. Found on the Namco Museum Volume 1, this PlayStation port is something of a mixed bag. While it looks fine, it is missing stuff that you'd expect to be there, such as the speech before the race. There were other changes too, 
such as the billboards, although this isn't a surprise, since the original arcade version used real sponsors such as Canon and Martini. I feel that the controls could have been replicated a little better too, as they're a little too twitchy for my liking. The slowdown doesn't help either. This is not a bad port by any means, but it's far from being arcade perfect. Also found on a Namco Museum is the Game Boy Advance port. I have to say, it's actually better than the PlayStation port. Yes, the resolution is a lot lower, but this plays so much nicer. The car feels weighty like it should and it doesn't skate across the circuit. The game even features some of the arcade speech. It's just a shame that the sound effects aren't that good and that it tends to slow down when there are a few cars on screen. Yet another Namco Museum port, this time for the Nintendo 64. This port is very much like the Game Boy Advance version, but now running in a higher resolution. The car animation does seem a little shaky though. Just take a look. Mass media were behind this Dreamcast port found on the port of Namco Museum. It's actually the same team behind the Game Boy Advance and Nintendo 64 ports. This, just like them, is apparently not emulation of the arcade. It's a reasonable port that controls well enough, with either digital or analog controls. The ZX Spectrum port looks pretty clean. I especially like the clarity of the road signs. However, the game plays like one of those Tomitronic 3D games. It kinda looks and sounds like one too. This wouldn't be such a bad thing since those games are rather fun. This isn't. There's a severe lack of speed and movement is slow. I wouldn't recommend this port to anyone. When I was in school, the computers we used were BBC Micros, and one of the games installed onto the network was this, Pole Position. 
I had fond memories of this game which came flooding back when I booted up this port for this video. I'm happy to say it's still a rather playable port. The controls are tight and collision detection is pixel perfect. Yes, it's rather choppy looking but don't forget, this is a BBC Micro. Looking pretty basic, but not as basic as the Atari 2600, comes this very tricky to control in television port. What's strange about this one is that it keeps the Fuji Raceway track name and allows you to race on a few different tracks from the very beginning. Handled by Atari Soft, like many of the ports, this VIC-20 port is yet another bare bones basic port. Dual qualifying lap and one race. The game controls fairly well and for the system it's running on, it's smooth enough. The problem is that it's not very exciting. If I had shown you this version first and told you it was on the VIC-20, you probably would have believed me. This is actually the Commodore 64 version and isn't it pants. This was ported by Datasoft in the States. I can't say this is doing the C64's image any good at all. The hardware is far more capable than this. Surprisingly a fairly playable port of pole position right here on the Texas Instrument 99. It looks basic as you'd expect but it has what it needs to keep you coming back for more. Well, maybe it did in the early 80s. These days it wouldn't really hold your attention. Good old MS-DOS with its CGA graphics gives this port a unique look. 
as we can see pole position on MS-DOS runs as we'd expect. Not too smooth, but then again, not too bad either. The port is fairly competent. Possibly the most uncommon version of pole position out there. This is for the Vectrex. On a real Vectrex system, this looks lovely and sharp. This port plays really well also, making it one of the best home ports out there. It's just a shame it's quite expensive to play this on real hardware. Let's take a look at all those versions of pole position running side by side with a cool instrumental version of the main animation series title theme. <laughs> 